Hi everyone, Nas here from InfoTech Journal. Let's continue on our PowerShell journey in our video series, which is effectively at the end of the video series, we'll have a working product, which is a Java plus PowerShell and a little bit of Excel my, know, macros to give us a working solution for what we want to achieve. Okay. So far in terms of PowerShell, we've looked at a few things. Um, we've looked at methods we've looked at methods and properties. We've also looked at how to access those methods or properties. If you were to have a variable, let's say a variable X, okay. If you were to have a variable, you can just use the dot operator and input the method with the two brackets there or the dot operator with some properties to take out the properties. If you were to just have a raw string or a command that you're using let's say we are using uh, get process get process and let's say you want to get process for a name process we've been using firefox so far let's use reuse firefox i'm sorry excuse me okay we're using firefox in order for us to gain access to the properties or methods we have to encase this whole command this whole command and with its own brackets okay and then use the dot operator similarly if you want to use it so that's a way to access the methods and properties if you're using it directly for a commandlet so now we know how to access methods and properties now let's look into this particular video series we're going to explain on this symbol which is basically just a vertical line what that vertical line is it's pipe in this video we we'll look we we'll look deeper into what a pipe does basically if you have a pipe there's a pipe in the middle you have one part of your command and then the second part of your command this is the first part this is the second part whatever value or information that is pertinent on the first section will get passed on to the second section. This section, second section, if you're using a commandlet or using well, maybe assigning it to another variable or so, so such and such, or maybe formatting a table or sorting it, this action will then be performed after the pipe. To better understand what a pipe is, and especially the specific nuances or the process in PowerShell in using a pipe, we have to understand that in PowerShell, PowerShell, I'm just gonna say PS, PowerShell does two ways in terms of piping. So you either pipe passing the information, so you either pass by pass by value, so it's a pass by value, or you either pass by property name in this video we'll be looking in terms of both both and try to understand how we get to know whether it's passed by value or passed by property and the most important part why should we actually care about whether it's passed by value or passed by name if you're the type of person who's just going to use a script that's going to be passed by you know, given to you or just you just happen to be uh, having the script and then you don't really mind how the script achieves the goal then this might be extra information superfluous information perhaps but if your ultimate goal is to understand how we get to that script and eventually or effectively one day that you're going to make your own script or modify that script you become that just that bit more skillful in terms of handling PowerShell. So let's look at both of them, pass by value and pass by property name. So let's go into our PowerShell environment. We're going to open up PowerShell. So we're just going to use a PowerShell console for this one. So PowerShell. So I'll run an administrator. Okay, we now have a PowerShell console and we're running an administrator. To continue on, let's look at it further. So 
so we already know get process and get process we, we've looked at various ways in terms of um, using get process and you've looked at how i piped the get process into get member so effectively it's going to be get process um we're going to use the name okay i'm going to open notepad this is a different case notepad so we have a notepad ready here so we have a notepad process so name name is going to be notepad so and then we're going to pass this to get member looking at this now we've we successfully pass this portion to get member. So what is the data type or object type for get process? We know that get process is a system diagnostic process. That's the type, that's the type name. Why do we need to know what this type name is? Based on this information, the data type, especially we know the data type is process, we can do various things with it. For example, if we were to look at the other process, for example, we want to stop the process and we want to pipe this to stop process. We look at this, for example, uh, get process, uh, get process. I'm going to just add arrow and we're going to say stop process. Stop process will then take this side, which produces the system diagnostic process type and this will get passed into the stop process the stop process will then take this and actually stop the process namely the notepad process if we to look at this specifically this is a pass by value and then the stop process actually takes this in as an input object okay now you're going to ask me how do you actually know it's a pass by value and how do you know it's actually an input object? So rather than uh, executing this, we're gonna just going to clear the line. If you don't know how to clear the line, you just press escape and it will actually clear the line. To look at this further, we look at stop process. Okay. Get help actually, get help. Okay, stop process. And I'm going to open it in, in a new window, so show window. Yeah, it'll take a while. Okay, it opens. So for right now, we're just looking at parameters. If you're if you go to settings, uh, you can just unclick everything else and just show parameter. The parameter we're looking at right now is input object. Input object. If you look at here, input object except pipeline pipeline input, it's true, and it is by value. What does it mean by value? That means this is system diagnostic process. It's the same type as what would be passed by the get process. So it takes that value, accepts it, and then executes the stop process. If you don't know what the stop process is, uh, let's just go to um, description. The stop process command lit stops one or more running process so basically it just takes whatever information that's given to it and it'll stop the process so input object okay this is passed by value how do we know or how do you make sure that this is passed by value or how do we mimic this process or mimic this execution so i'm going to take that particular example that we've just that just did and we're gonna go here and we're gonna say i'm gonna assign a variable i'm say let's say variable uh notepad process notepad note process process and i'm gonna get get process and i'm gonna say the name is going to be notepad okay. now we have a variable I didn't assign the variable any type. So now we have a variable. The variable now holds the outcome or the output of this particular command or commandlet. So in order to get to see it, we're just going to do it again. Now we have a few notepads. And actually, I have a notepad plus plus. So one, two, three notepad instance. And that means I have other notepads in the back other than just this one. 
to get to see what the type is, we can just say the variable name and we're going to pass it to GM, which is get member. So I'm going to say just full get member. And it is the property type system diagnostic process. And I mentioned just now that at the top here, when you, okay, what is it? Do the command again. The command that we want to do was, uh, okay, uh, yeah, case one and top process. I mentioned this now that this will then produce an output, which is this format, uh, this type system domestic process, and then it will pass it into stop process. And stop process takes that in as a parameter of input object. And input object takes in the same parameter at the same type as it was passed in. So in order for us to test this, we're just gonna do, I'm gonna escape this again. I'm gonna say stop process stop process okay and it's a input object and i'm gonna pass it my variable which is node process node process because if you pass it just node process it is actually the same type as the system diagnostic process let's say let's just give it an example Okay. that input object takes in the same type of objects. But here we want to access the property inside node process and just pass it a name. Just pass it a name. Name, if you remember from our previous video, name, this portion is actually now a string. It's going to pass it a string. From the parameter description, it does not accept a string. If you send it by a string, Let's say, for example, name. Name is system string. And this is an example of by property name. So this will not work. So if you say this, press enter. Take a while. And you can see here, the input object cannot convert notepad value type string. And then it will produce an additional error, invalid argument. So if we were to pass this unknowingly when we were to pipe the command, let's say we were, we were to pipe it into the command just now. So we were going to pipe this portion. So we had some sort of get process here. Okay. So we had get process. And this is some sort of process. Right. But rather than sending this, we're actually doing this. And we're accessing the name and then we're passing it to stop process by default stop process takes an input object to perform its action not the string value name hopefully you can get a, a better understanding and a better idea why we're going through so much detail in terms of trying to understand pass by value and pass by property name. Because when you were doing your script, you're crafting or making your script, you have to make sure that your script, when you're passing the one, one information to another information using the pipe variable, that it is accepted and performs to what you expect it to perform or what you expect it to do. For example, here, we're actually using the name. You might say this is uh, silly, people might not do it, but I've seen one or two instances with fellow classmates and colleagues that when they were like piping commands, they expected to do one thing, but it didn't happen. So because they forgot that the parameter that were, they were sending into or piping into the second commandlet is not the right type that, or not the type that it was expecting. Now we've already looked at this, let's go back to our PowerShell and just follow on the examples. Let's go back to our PowerShell instance. And then we've already looked at stop process, input object, node process with name. Now, if we were to perform this particular action, okay, we're no longer passing it string, we're passing it the whole object itself, which is the same type, which is a process 
type. So if you were to press enter here, now after execution, it will then kill off our notepad object. But then make sure that you have the variable. Let's just reassign the variable to make sure we have the correct variable assignment. Okay, and then we're going to say no, stop process, input object, no process. And we enter. Now the input process is now clear. Because it is now the right type. So if you were to imagine this again, just a quick overview, this is the same as almost, okay, having it the two-step method so the first step is actually to do this to perform this action to get the list of processes with note in it and then after that we're gonna get that information and give it to the stop process effectively if we were to do this let's say open up notepad again this two-step process will will be done in one line with using the pipe okay well, we will pipe it in. So we will just take this as the first part of the command. We pipe it into the second part of the command, which is the stop process. And this, this effectively will do the same thing. So it'll take a while. Then now if you can see, we don't have that notepad in the background anymore. Just to verify, we can just say get process for this. Now we don't see that there's any process with notepad. Okay, for instance, that you want to show an example of maybe passing it by the name parameter, passing it by the name parameter, or we would like to say pass by property name, an example of it. So if we were to do that, simple enough, we can just mimic that by opening notepad again. And then you have to make sure that when you open a new notepad instance that you reassign the variable because if you look if you were to look at the variable itself yeah this is the id which is 33408 and if you were to just get the updated get process with the name note with a uh, no, note and we press enter and you can see now the id is different so if you were to do the action again with just the variable the variable is now stale i would say stale or not relevant because it's now different id so we have to rerun the assignment of the variable once we run the assignment of the variable we can see now that both of them are the same id if you were to example by name we can just say get a stop process okay we're gonna say name name and the name would be we'll say notepad process and we will act as the name property you say enter as you can see here now it's stopped because if you look at this if you were to just look at this and you say gm that is a type string and we know that name takes in a string okay so if we were to do that in terms of typing we were to do that in terms of piping as i showed you just now is basically we were gonna do we, we, let's open notepad again notepad. okay then we're gonna bracket that we're gonna say get process okay and then i say name note and then we're gonna do, do the uh, name parameter and then we're gonna pass it to stop process okay. this is how we would do it if we would just pass the name variable so if you just enter here it says if you look at this input object cannot be bound to parameter because it says here stop process it's looking for an input object remember we, we when we tried it just now it was looking for an input object so as you can see here now, it doesn't want to work because it is not the right type that you're passing along to get process. Even if you say stop process name, it would still expect you to say a system string because it is not, it is not the proper way for you to pass the parameters along. 
So that's why it is important for you to understand when what type of parameters it is accepting and then what type of values or property names you can pass when you pipe. This is specifically for get process because why? If you say, let's say stock property again, um, get help, uh, stock process. Okay, get help, uh, get process, and then say pull. And look at parameters. Name is by property name, and this is by value. Okay, not all of them are going to be the same. If you were to look at for instance, uh, stop. This is, we just looked at process. Let's look at service. And pull. If we look at service and pull, and especially the name parameter, you notice that the name parameter here is by property name or by value. That means with the stop, stop service, okay, it's smart enough that if you were able to pass it an object directly, it can siphon off or you can try to find that name parameter okay, directly, or you can just pass it the value of the name directly as well, or the property name okay, in that particular object. So as I say it again to just be clear, hopefully you're not getting confused, with this particular commandlet, which is stop service, if you were to pipe it an object, okay, it will then look at the object by the value specifically. So even the input object, it can look at by value. But it, it's also okay for you if you are to pass it a name since it can look directly for the property name within that object. Now we're going to ask probably, or if you were to ask, how do we figure out which, um, which type or which parameter type is uh, interchangeable between some commandlets? So again, we can use our commands that we learned previously, which is get command. Okay, let's just get help first, get help, get command. If you look at get help get command, and let's look at okay, this parameters here. If you look at the parameter, the parameter, there's a parameter type. If you look at parameter type, uh, this doesn't show it. Or parameter name, parameter type. Let's look at the the details. So we're gonna say full, so we can see the parameter descriptions. Uh, here it is. Da -da -da -da. Parameter type specifies an array of parameter names, the commandlet gets the command in session, da, da, da. So basically this, if you use this parameter and the parameter type name, you it will show you the possible commandlets that uses that particular parameter type. So let's just see. We were working with get process. So if we say get process again, um, I just escape. I'm just gonna say get process and note GM. So GM is get member. So I'm gonna say get member. So it's easy for you to remember. Uh, okay. You know why it didn't work? Because there's no such thing as a process with note. I did not use my wildcard. Oops. Let's go another wildcard. You have to make sure that the first part works before you actually pipe it into. If not, you'll get errors. But what do I mean by that is, let's say um, the first one I did. Okay, the first one I did, if I delete get member. Okay, cannot find process with note because there's no such thing as a note. So the second part I did, because I was too hasty, I only did the first portion. And there is no such thing as anything with note. So if I did both of them like that, then you can see that there's actually a notepad. Because remember, when I say star note, that means anything in front with ending with note. And if I say note star, that means anything with the note in front and the star in the back. Actually, if you were to just make it simple, you can actually just say note like this. And it also produce the same results. 
So with an error or with something that doesn't produce anything, because uh, it's empty or null, if you're gonna pass it to get member, get members, you'll say, oi, uh, you're passing me an error. So I'll just give you an error back. Or, oi, you're, you're giving me a null. I don't know what to do with this because there's no value for me to get members off. So that's basically what it's showing here. So now we, all that basic quick troubleshooting. So now we get process node. We know that this is a type of system diagnostic process. So we get back to our initial intention, which is to get process or get command. Get command, we will now to look at parameter type. Parameter type and the parameter type is, seems like I copied the wrong thing. Let's go back up and uh, make sure you do this. You highlight and right click and right click. So now, get command parameter type system diagnostic process. So all the commandlets that uses this particular process or parameter type will be shown here. So if you were to pass get process to stop process that you know by virtue of it using the same parameter type or the same object type, that is gonna be an input object. So get process, We'll pass this into input object for stop process. But that's how you look at it if you were to de develop your um, script with types. So you have, just have to be careful when you're passing it either a name, parameter, or the value itself. So with this one, you know it is a value because an input object takes in the value. If you are not sure, you can always just say get help process and say full or i usually prefer show window but some people don't don't like doing show window it's up to your preference now you look at input object through and it's by value okay hopefully this has been helpful it's a bit tricky here and there but i i, I can assure you that pipes are not as tricky it's only tricky when you're trying to pipe it you're trying to pipe something that's not of the same uh, parameter type or once by value one expecting a property name that sometimes happens but uh, that happens you can always just go back here to your help in full and check whether you're doing it correctly or another tip would be let's say let's say we're gonna do this let's say this is a uh, part one and you're piping it to part two Okay, some sort of part two, and you're piping it to part three, and it didn't work. It didn't work. So the first thing you want to check is, what does part three expects? What is the value that it's expecting? So you delete part three and just run it as part one and part two. And if that works, well, or if, well, if that works, then you just check it with get member to make sure what is the outcome of it. Outcome of it. And if the outcome is a string, just make sure that the third part of your script uh, is expecting a string or is expecting a par parameter name for that matter or if it's a name I, I would expect it to be a name if it's a string uh, so you can do it stepwise build it step by step make sure that the first part works and then you develop it to the second part the second part and then you works and you develop it to the third part if the third part doesn't work uh, make sure that you know what the third part is expecting delete the third part Check what is the outcome of the first two parts with get member and just make sure that they match to develop your PowerShell script. Hopefully this has been useful to you. You now know a bit more, uh, not only just taking a script from the internet or anywhere and then just dumping it in and using it. Now you can actually uh, have the knowledge to alter the script to better suit your needs. And also with this understanding, you can better troubleshoot if there were to be anything unexpected that happens with your script. Uh, thank you for viewing this, video, uh, viewing this video in this video series. Hopefully it's been helpful and I expect you to see the next few video series in this Java, PowerShell and Excel video series. Thank you.